everybody, it's your girl, Queen Vanessa Hood Scholar Muff. I hope everybody is doing good out there, great, doing what you need to be doing, not what you want to be doing. Welcome to the War on Drugs AM Podcast. I'm going to keep on this movement around mental health because of my expertise and I am team mental health because I'm fucked up. I took a dive into some of our most prominent leaders and broke down their mental health. So let's get into it and stick with me. So I'm going to give you the words of Queen Shakur, Shakur, Tupac Mama. And this is what she said. When you tell the truth, you set your mental health free. Now that's some badass shit. It don't get no better than that. So I took a dive into her book that was wrote by Jasmine Guy. Yeah, they was partners. They was friends. The Evolution of a Revolutionary. It was published in 2003. Do me a favor right quick for some of you OGs out there. Just think about and ask yourself, what was you doing in 2003? (laughs) <laughs> Maybe, I know some of y'all probably wasn't even born And then some of y'all was thinking about y'all kids Or trying to make them Or thought y'all should have made them Or what have you But everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome I'm just saying Okay, so I'm going to answer first I was struggling with some hood shit Out there in Hunters Point Smoking crack Fucking on a couple of niggas and shit that had the plug. Because, see, I always had to fuck with the niggas that had the motherfucking plug. I even had to take a bitch, nigga. Hi, baby. I kept a job and I kept my own motherfucking money. I'm like Tupac Mama. Bitches not ready for a real revolution. They want to be groupies and fucking screw up and down and all around. Therefore, most women would be down for a nigga before they even be down with their own motherfucking struggles. Welcome to the War on Drugs AM podcast. I'm your hood scholar Muff. And on this platform, we're going to show you some California love. Well, as shake your damn mind like an earthquake. See, motherfuckers be talking that I'm woke shit. How woke are you? On the War on Drugs AM podcast, we're going to bring you your PPS. Your past, present, and future survival of America black social justice from a real hood perspective. I'm hood certified. What gives me my hood scholar practice? Uh-huh. Stick with a bitch uh-huh. and find out. However, I might be a couple of bitches. You are a bird man. When you speak on my motherfucking name, put some respect on my shit. Now, let's set the tone. Okay. Now, this here is my first episode of the War on Drugs AM podcast. When you tell the truth, you set your mental health free, baby. Okay, today, as we get ready to learn some of the battles that Tupac Mama Queen Shakur experienced in America during the Civil Rights Revolution. She had childhood issues. She had problems in the Black Panthers. She had friends that betrayed her. And she had the battle with the crack cocaine. She even told the theory on how the niggas sold out before females, gangsters to snitches. She even broke down how America used to book women into the county jails. 
a FEMA story was so damn real and an eye opener. She didn't hold nothing back. She broke down the pain she put on her dude wife by moving into their home. She talked about how she saw the mental health she created on that woman that led that woman to heavy drinking. She broke down the piece about how Huey P. Newton, you know, I guess because his ass was hella fine and shit. So I guess that he could get everything walking and talking at the same time. But she said she had to shut his ass down because he tried her, basically. <laughs> she had to back his pretty boy ass up. And then she wanted to say about all the other females in the Black Panther Party wanted to be down and would do whatever it took. She said, not her, baby. Uh Uh-uh. Queen Shakur said, not her. Remember this. When you organize any movement, you know, this is what I'm saying. It's always going to be a hidden motherfucking agenda. Now, allow me to dive into Tupac's relationship with his mom. Because Tupac was very, very mad at his mom. I'm sure some of us that grew up in that hip-hop era remember that. Tupac was mad at his mom because back in Harlem, she began to smoke crack. And when Tupac found out that she was smoking crack, he asked her and she told him the truth. And then she said, yeah, son, I got it. I'm going to be able to handle it. I got it under control. And they and they bond was no lies. So Pac believed in his mom like he was supposed to. That she would control the crack game. But as a former crack smoker myself, baby, there was no controlling the crack game it's like the mastery behind that crack motherfucking game had the right ingredients and information to break down the black humanity you know the queen you know Shakur she told her son that she had the crack but yet she fell off Tupac became upset and called his mother a liar and because she wasn't about to have that dis motherfucking respect, she had coming out of the Black Panthers and after the back niggas up and shut chin check bitches, she said she wasn't having that shit from Tupac. And then this is what she said, and I quote, Nobody had crack until God stepped into my life. But nobody had crack until God stepped in. I got myself into crack. But it was God who brought me out. I'm going to say that again. The queen said, I got myself into crack. But it was God who brought me out. Amen to you, Queen Shakur. Appreciate you. See, her her testimony that she had, she testified that God could not get her attention until he gave her that crack pipe. Because let me tell you something, he sure will have a way to have you, he he sure will have you get something or somebody to get your attention. And that's going to be one of my other commentaries, just stick with me. So then the queen went and spoke on how she had all the drama in the West Coast and shit, you know, and how she was battling with her addiction and stuff, you know. And then it hit her and Tupac and his sister hard, you know. So she thought she would do the right thing and send her da- her her son and daughter out to Marin. To somebody she called a so-called friend. Remember that friend betrayal? That was out there getting drunk in the motherfucker. And was more fucked up than she was. You know, if, if, if people just kept it real. Look, sis, I'm fucked up. And I got good, I, 
Now, I'm not good myself. And I don't need you to send them out here with me because I'm barely making it out here in California. What I loved about Queen Shakur, her truth, as she told Jasmine Guy, it was the beginning of her healing her mental health. Happy mental health for everybody. Happy Mental Health Month 2023. You are streaming in with the War on Drugs AM podcast. Or perhaps you will be listening from the Urban Black Community Network, Born and Raised Survivors and Community Developers. Mental Health and Civil Rights Survival in the War on Drugs via Hip Hop series is on its way. Now, it's important to understand the patterns of America. Mental systematic impacts. Okay. Now, what I loved about Tupac Mama is that she's leaving behind a real shit on mental health and how it played a real big factor in the civil rights movement of survival and all the other racism that our ancestors experienced and how racism and the, 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 the hate against black people, the anti-hate is so real. So I'm going to give you a little clips about what she said about her grandparents, her mother parents. Of course, her grandfather's sperm was in fear. It was traumatized. Of course, in her womb, her mom was nervous and angry and full of fear and anxiety of having to deal with her abusive husband because he was angry being a black man in motherfucking America that had to face early stages of the real motherfucking racism. You understand? So now, let's flip into Tupac Mama. She went through the same thing because her father was abusive to her. She had to survive the best way she could out there in the Bronx in New York or, 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 or um, you know, where they was resigning. And, the, and, and, and then also survive in a revolution area of the civil rights movement. Then she gets pregnant with Pac in prison while he in the womb. You know, with all that environmental stress passed down to generation after generation. And who's to say Pac's sperm from his father, the sperm of his father, wasn't full of alcohol and drugs. You know what I'm saying? During that time of conception. Because I'm sure in America, blacks in America really wanted to be numb back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Why did most Americans... Believe pop mental health stayed at a hundred because they already knew what he was born against. Because Pac was marked at birth. Remember the lyrics. I have to worry about the niggas, bitches, and the police. Now that's you know now that's some real ass shit right there. Now I'm gonna break down this shit from a hood perspective on why he said he had to worry about all those three entities, the police, because his bloodline as a born warrior to the black struggle, to the black people in America, the bitches because bitches ain't shit. They the first. To easy be mind control And you whisper baby I love you And that ain't go ready to set a nigga up The fuck yeah I said it This is some real hood shit I'm a hood scholar The niggas Because His mother was the truth when she said The so called brothers Turn against you and snake on you And then them motherfuckers be ready to sell you out <laughs> See I can't make this shit up You Has got to read the book yourself the evolution of a revolutionary, baby. I cannot make this shit up. But then I want to go into this quote that she said. And it's very, very important that you understand this quote, baby. Because, see, we all got mental health issues. We need to make sure we take quotes and pack them in our brain as a way of survival, like affirmation. It's important 
to know the stuff you come from. Tupac Mama warned us and telling us. Know your shit. Know what the fuck you coming from so you can know where you at. So you can know where you need to be. I love how she told how her and Pac didn't really get along because Pac always called her manly. You know, because she grew up and had to boss up because she said if she didn't boss up, she was already had low self-esteem from her father mentally abusing her. And then he walked out on her and her mother and her little sister. And she said if she didn't boss up, Harlem, New York would have had ate her and her sister and her mother alive. The mind of a, of a revolutionary in mental health. The queen dropped out of high school, but unschooled. She was born in the dirty roads of rural North Carolina, but survived the streets of New York, baby, the Bronx. She tried to experience early, nearly, um, early in her life, Haram, but it nearly killed her. So she backed up off that shit, and that was in like 1966. She admitted what her dreams were. That's why I love her boss ass. She said her dreams and her her fantasies was to be a professional hit woman. (laughs) Because she said, and I quote, black women was taking a lot of abuse. Then she went on to talk about her boyfriend, Ray, that was 33 and she was 18. And see, I know that's um, still of age so that's not quite so much some R. Kelly and Leah shit but I'm just saying it always been some R. Kelly and some Leah shit let's move on right along to the queen as she talk about her relationship with her mama she broke it down that Queen Shakur broke it down that her mother accepted what she was doing her mother was proud that she had a voice that she had the energy to fight and speak up for herself and and the beat down poor black folks. You know, see, we got to understand that mental health is some real ass shit. And we got to quit acting like it's not. So I wanted to share with you what she said. And then I'm going to break down in part two on how she said that we has got to control our mental health. Do you understand? So stay tuned and subscribe, like, share, because it gets better. We're going to get into part two. When you tell the truth, you set your mental health free. Part two is coming. But also, remember... If you and someone you know that is experiencing mental health or thoughts of suicide, text or call 988. Appreciate you. Part two coming. Don't go. I'm coming back. Give me a minute. I'm coming. Love y'all. Stay blessed.